Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today's journey will take us through, once again, another permadeath story featuring this orc warrior from the marshlands to the west. This orc has an incredible hatred for anything that can wield or use arrows. This hatred is born from the fact that elves and humans alike keep the orcs trapped in their marshland, using weapons that most orcs would consider cowardly and for those that are weak. So, you may have noticed, I'm actually going to be running Shield Smash as we test its limits against other players and rangers alike. It does a little bit of physical damage and then slows for two seconds, I think it's a 20% slow. The damage is about 28 damage per smash, which isn't great, but slow can be functional. That being said, you may notice something is a little off of my screen and I sincerely apologize. Some sort of update or setting change or maybe Windows 11, I have no idea. For whatever reason, OBS decided to change my capture. And here we are. So, we'll do this. You can still see my health bar, so the important stuff is still there, thankfully. And I don't have time. I just don't have time to go back and record uh, a boatload of more stuff. That being said, we'll still have a lot of fun with this one, and I'm excited to show you guys what Shield Bash can and can't do. This orc, this orc is from the front lines, standing row on row with other orc warriors, protecting the rock lobbers and sometimes goblin tribes that join the orc warband. Now, goblins are not to be trusted as well as they often, they often take advantage of the simple-minded orcs as they find mischievous ways to negotiate for valuable ore and armors. So, this orc does not care about slaying goblins, and he's going to go right for the centipede as well, because monsters such as this are pretty common in his homeland. And the trick we discovered is, thanks to a lot of support from other other warriors, simply go straight forward when uh, that spit is about to arrive. So you rotate and rotate and rotate as usual, and then be sure to just simply walk towards its tail the second you see any sort of purple forming in its mouth. We get a little lucky, he's not actually doing it as often, but uh, I have become more successful. Let's just say that. In, in the past, I was more focused on getting space and distance, which is not the right play. You need to be right on top of its tail, pretty much stomping on it as you're rotating around it. We get some items, they're not incredible, it's something. I prefer getting a blue or better ring or pendant, but uh, we'll take what we can get. And sometimes you do get like a purple bandage or something, which uh, I guess wouldn't be too bad on a permadeath run, but if you're trying to build a character for the long term, finding decent blue pendants can be very expensive, and the money is well worth it, especially early on. I will just also say, this is before the lobby changes, so this is, I would say, a little bit more difficult now, considering I'm not sure what to make of the new lobbies, especially for permadeath runs. I have a feeling a lot of people will still find a way to get good gear into the lobby, but at the same time, I feel like I've outgrown the pre-level 15 queue. So I'll be queuing into it on a level 1. It's going to be interesting. I'm not sure how it's going to work for permadeath. I, I want to still keep the competition alive and have really, really exciting fights. Sometimes those crazy moments happen because you're fighting a guy that's you know, has more gear, more items, higher level, and you win because of whatever you're able to achieve with your skill. Now that's a double-edged sword because oftentimes I do get basically one tapped by a rogue that has a blue rapier and some strength items or weapon damage. So we'll see. I'm excited to give it some tries. And uh, this is recorded before that change. So this is the old lobby system, and I'll be sure to share my journeys with you on any of the new Q systems going forward. Starting to get a little collection of loot here as we breeze through this game. We're gonna head into we're gonna head into this middle section. It's not as bad as I used to think. Dodging a lot of the mobs down here is not that difficult, and if you can deal with death beetles by sidestepping and have a class that's fairly agile, like this fighter class, you can get away from it without taking really any damage at all. It's a fairly predictable movement, once you're comfortable swinging and not going for greed. Skeleton Mage is also a fairly easy thing to take care of. 
most times it'll just kill itself if you can get it pinned against a wall fireballing in your direction. These other mobs, unless they're red, you should be able to dodge them okay. I'm not even sure if I was close enough for that thing to hit me, but we still attempted the dodge that everyone told me I should be using. This orc's pretty fearless. He does not care about mobs or skeletons. We do, however, see a pop of green smoke, which means that is a player somewhere close by. You may be wondering why I don't have my shield equipped on my primary. I do not like being that slow. Primary sword is the fastest primary weapon you can use on the fighter class, and I really like having that speed available early on to deal with mobs. Sure, I could block these with my shield or learn, but sometimes it's just best to clear them out with your arming sword and forget the blocking. I'm keeping that shield on my secondary mainly because it only applies minus 12 movement speed, and if I want to get the most out of shield bash, and if I want to catch people using shield bash, I need to have it by itself so my speed isn't reduced by the arming sword. I'll show some... I'll show some examples also later on of what other shields can do. But for this one, we're going with shield smash on our, our standard setup, very basic, level one, and we'll see how it does. Here, guy opened a door close by. We just picked up a very, a very orcish weapon, which is this Viking sword. It is a weapon of strength and power that we're hoping to use on this measly little rogue. I whip my shield out as I move a little bit faster, hoping I can catch this guy with a shield smash to the face. Zone's actually pushing him slightly in this direction. I don't think he wants to go into that large room to the right. Typical road nature. Go completely invisible in your face and then hope for an ambush. And this little game of cat and mouse means kind of just keep our distance, which is the main problem with the Viking Sword, as we will come familiar with. We decided to just give up this this little game. And this guy... This guy puts himself in a very unique death position. That's all I'm going to say about that one. And it's, uh... Yeah, I had a good laugh. Let's just put it that way. Anyway, we have this Viking Sword, and you may have noticed, but the second animation is a little bit faster, I believe. It seems to chop down quite a bit quicker, but the problem with the Viking Sword, and one of the main reasons why I think it will still be difficult to use, and we'll, we'll give it a shot here for a while, the reach. Its reach is still pretty poor, and unless you're right on top of somebody chopping down like we were there with that rogue, uh, it's difficult. It's very difficult to land hits on someone using a weapon with any more reach that knows what they're doing. So we'll give it a try. This orc loves it. It feels nice in his hands. We'll see what it can do. Moving on from that rogue that was auditioning for one of Stimpy's thumbnails, we have this little cave to ourselves now. Doesn't mean we can do what we want, but we can still maybe take our time and clear out some of these bottom uh, barrels and items. Let's see if we can find some more loot. Even killing mobs isn't a huge problem. Maybe get us to level 5 a little faster. I'm quickly looking at this Viking Sword animation. That second chop does come down. Like that second and third one comes down. I think the third one's altogether new. I believe. I used to think it was only a two chop combo. I believe they added a third one. But I could be wrong. It is not a weapon I use very often, even with dual wield. Mainly because, like I said earlier, the reach. Its damage numbers weren't the best, and attack speed was super, super slow. There were just so many better options. Recently, the Falchion's been getting hit with a whole load of nerfs, so a lot of guys have been switching to the Arming Sword. But potentially, it could be an item or weapon of use for Barbarians. Trying to get the least amount of movement speed penalty on a single-handed or one-handed weapon, and just rush people down. It could be, maybe, replacing the Horseman's Axe, I think a lot of guys are just going with quarterstaff, as it has a little bit better reach as well. And we decide not to hang around too long for that final portal. The 
that sometimes it can spawn above or below you, and you have basically no time at all. That final portal, you have to be almost standing on top of it, or be incredibly fast, which luckily our fighter class is, to make it around the map, get to it, open it, and survive. So it's not, it's not always a good time waiting for that last circle, or last portal to spawn. However, we did do okay here. That one rogue kill was enough to give us a whole inventory of loot. And now we get my absolutely favorite part of this whole endeavor. That is selling items and checking out shops to see what's available. I find it so interesting, especially on the fighter class, because you have so many, so many options. And once we sell these two items, we're going to keep the falchion in our inventory just to see what potentially we could be buying. As we have 136 gold. Now, like I said, this orc likes his, his big boy weapons. And that viking sword fits the bill for what he's trying to accomplish quite well. We're trying to rush people down and chop them to bits. Especially rangers. Now looking at the goblin merchant. Nothing too exciting. Maybe the heavy leather leggings. Or even loose trousers to give us a little bit more agility. Making those swings or item equip speeds a little bit faster. Agility is not a terrible thing when you're switching from sword to shield. As you notice, we are running Castillan, which means I'm going to throw dual wield on to give that Viking sword a little bit more attack speed. We roll loose trousers here and get plus three additional movement speed, which will greatly help us as we chase down any pesky player we can. And then it's kind of it's kind of a an odd situation. There's not a lot of good options or upgrades available. I will say the Falchion has been extremely successful in any dual wield setup. As you have the reach, it helps so much having that attack speed. And 90% of the people are using an Armoring Sword or Falchion. So you can always guarantee you're going to be able to reach and hit them while they are also in combat range. Not a lot of players are using two-handed weapons at all. So... It's basically a game of who can get on top of each other first, especially with Barbarians, but maybe we'll see some of that change as hot patches continue to roll out. I would love to see a world where Spear and Halberd and some of those weapons become more viable, but really on the Fighter class, most people are just running Sword and Shield to maximize that damage reduction. We're going to go a little different, something I've been doing for a long time and have kind of recently got back into again, and that will be Dual Wield with a Viking Sword. Viking Sword's a bit of an outlier here for my usual setups, and we'll see just what it can do. We had some luck against a rogue, so maybe it's just a rogue killer, which uh, isn't such a bad thing with how many of them are populating the dungeons. This orc does not care whether it's ranger or rogue. They're all weak individuals he's willing to smash. Just checking out this uh, movement speed on sprint. And a shield. You can move pretty damn quick. And you might have missed it the first time, but it is 28 damage. And this Viking Sword's hitting for 55 or 58. Which is not terrible. That attack speed is coming through quite nicely. With the 15% attack speed. And the only reason why I didn't choose Slayer over Dual Wield. Is because I have a weapon with okay, like, okay damage already. And I feel like the Viking Sword's going to benefit a lot more from the attack speed when you're in close than it will weapon damage. It hits a fair bit faster. Slayer is also a very good perk early on. Plus five weapon damage is a huge upgrade on some of the starting weapons. But I have a nice helmet and that headshot reduction is just unmatched. I mean, Kettle Hat or Chapelle de Fer isn't going to do much for you, but it will be better than a leather hat. I'm a little disappointed that Fighter or other classes don't have a few other helmet options. Warlock, Rogue, all those ones get Shadow Mask and Interesting Hoods that give plus strength or plus all attributes. Fighter gets a leather cap when going with Slayer, which is basically your highest damage output you can get level 1. You get tagged by the poison here, but like I said, I just need to start walking straight ahead, which you'll notice. And that will take care of that problem. So yeah, you can go Slayer, but... Yeah, you will take some serious headshot damage from a longbow, any type of bow. Barbarian's weapons will usually hit heads as they come down from top to bottom, meaning 
7% headshot reduction sometimes just isn't enough. And oftentimes, I will run dual wield with Adrenaline Rush, skipping Slayer and taking a Hoon Skull, or Hound Skull, and getting as much headshot protection as I can get on top of some projectile resistance. That is the biggest downfall of Slayer, in my opinion, is the fact helmets are so damn useful. And it's so frustrating that in order to get okay damage on the fighter class, we have to sacrifice something so beneficial. Other classes, not a whole lot of those sacrificing moments going on. You basically just pick all the things that give you the most damage, press the kill buttons. It is incredibly difficult to do any amount of consistent solid damage on fighter. Even when you go full tank, some of the some of the matchups to me look so funny when you're seeing like a fighter v fighter using an army sword. It just takes so long to kill each other, it looks so silly. And I'm almost ashamed at times to be a fighter player when I see that gameplay. Because it is, uh, just doesn't look exciting to me. So I always try to find other ways to deal damage on the fighter class, or use a weapon that, in its moment, in niche moments can be very successful and exciting. This orc's pretty simplistic, and this viking sword's something new to me, but so far, hasn't really let us down. And we'll see, maybe, get an opportunity to put it to test here again soon. We hear a ranger up above us, so we're getting our shield out. And we can pretty much push a ranger and not take terrible damage if we have our shield up. We're gonna see if we can get into some action here, test this shield smash out for the first time. Talking a few arrows from this guy, our shield's doing its job. He's in a very difficult spot for us to push. So we're just gonna give this a second, heal up a bit, and then go again. Sounds like he dropped down. And as usual, he's putting a trap down. Try to keep us at his zone. He didn't have time to do it. Puts a couple arrows into our shield, and we missed the shield smash. Similar story. The reach is not very far, and I thought he was a lot closer to us. Now the chase is on, as he pops another heal. I switched to the dagger here, thinking he was going to keep running. And it cost us some, some damage, because we could have smashed him with that overhead. Luckily for us, the wall spike did its job, as this guy ran straight into it. Meaning, we didn't get to finish him off with our viking sword. Early signs on shield smash. I prefer using the buckler. Before we can kind of dilly-dally here too long. We get a cleric fully juiced up, pushing towards us. And I don't mean fully geared, I just mean he has protection and likely divine strike. And judgment, which just misses us. We could take a lot of damage quickly with a couple mace swings. And that's it for us. We need to time this well, we need to try to work between his cooldowns. And see if we can hit him with a smash. He blocks our shield smash. Which, which should not be a thing. Should be breaking that guy's arm, the amount of force this orc puts into that smash, each time he throws it. So yes, you can block a shield smash, which is crazy to me. And the other crazy thing, you take damage as people can hit through your block. I think the first change I'd make to shield smash would be making sure that it's blocking while you're using it. So while you're smashing, I want that block to stay as if I'm holding block. That way I don't just trade damage. It's not really going to win me any fights trading damage. The slow only lasts for a few moments, and the reach is so short, you have to be right on top of that guy. So you're making yourself super vulnerable, not getting a real good a real good trade-off, you know what I mean? You usually lose as people just continuously swing, they don't even care. They're just This guy's an idiot walking towards me with the shield. I'm just going to swing like a madman, and then when you do go to smash them, it has to be so well-timed that they don't hit you through that shield. So, that's my early thoughts on it. We're gonna keep trying this and see... See if we can smash this guy in the face, or maybe even just avoid this cleric for now. He has so much sustain, he's full health, protection bubble, and I just don't have the damage or the HP pool to compete with that quite yet. The door opens on our level close by, so we switch the shield. And another ranger. We might need to block a few more arrows here. 
or find a way around that isn't going to lead us into a trap door. And this guy's hungry. He's hungry for the kill. We spot a portal a little distance away, and somehow we aggro that bola goblin. Those things are criminal. They pretend like they're still swinging and then release it just as you get close. And it quite often leads to taking a fair bit of damage if you try to kill one of them. Sure, you can block it, move close, block it, move close. It takes a long time with a ranger on my heels. I'm just going to avoid that situation. We go the long way around this map to get back to zone. I'm expecting to see a ranger up close here soon. And I hear a spear drawn. That means he is on our tail. Or... Heading right for our face. He's trying to zone us with spears, so the best option we have is just to get close, using our attack speed to win that fight. No shield smash in this instance. If he wasn't running, I might have switched to it if he decided to turn tail and book it out of there. This guy, I give him credit. He was not backing down. He wanted to use that spear to all its power. Thought he had us cornered and trapped. But an orc is fearless. And we did not care, and that viking sword once again. Once again, pretty strong damage. Three swings. Three quick swings, I might add. And if I had Adrenaline Rush running instead of Shield Smash, you could dish out some pretty solid damage in a player's face. And that is kind of what you need to be doing with Dual Wield anyway. It's a very much a DPS heavy situation. Issue becomes whether or not you can actually trade damage quick enough to survive. So far, we've managed it, and we're going to take a short rest here to get some of our HP back as we go through our inventory. While resting, we did hear a portal in the room beyond. So we'll push in that direction, expecting to find that cleric camping this room once again. I was kind of hoping he would just bugger off. I don't really want to get judgmented and have no HP left. Sounds like he does... He does take an exit early, which leaves us, like I said, with the last portal, which can be difficult if you're in a different room. Considering now that we're in an open room and we can get up and down quite quickly, I'm not too concerned. But other parts of the map, if you get stuck in this situation, you have to sprint through a lot of hallways past potentially a lot of mobs, get there as fast as possible. Like, super fast, or else you're missing the portal. It spawns, as you'll see, only at the last moments. Kind of hoping it spawns on this level. It'd be kind of handy. I mean, we wouldn't have to go anywhere. And this is the kind of weird moments of Goblin Caves where you're just... It's almost too peaceful. And... Smash my sword, we summon, uh... We summon the portal after all. But yeah, there's also a few times in Goblin Caves where it just feels like there's not enough chaos, and much live in the chaos which is goblin caves and often it is a place for me to test anything out i want to try if i want to try fighting barbarians with a certain setup or certain weapon go into goblin caves use a spear for a while test it out it can be a lot of fun some people hate the map in its entirety but i love the fact that i know pvp is literally one door away selling all our valuables and then making sure we get everything sold we're gonna keep that we're going to keep that just in case I want to switch to Slayer. Something tells me I kind of enjoy the attack speed right now on the Viking Sword. So we get some gold, we get a pendant. We almost always forget, almost always forget some items. I'm selling that pendant, it's kind of worthless to me considering I have one a little better already on. Take a quick thought. Quick look at dual wield and slayer, and kind of enjoying the attack speed on Viking Sword, like I was saying earlier. So, we're gonna stick with the headshot reduction of the Chef Held the Fair and maybe sell this one, even though no leather cap is, uh, is your only option on Slayer. We'll see what we can buy or gamble for because really, if you get a lucky roll on gambling, it could propel your character into some pretty nice gear. Usually I'd gamble on weapons or rings and pendants. And really the shop, the shop's mediocre. The big thing in that shop that has me curious is that, is that falchion. A blue rondelle. 
not really worth it. Even though it's a green falchion with not many attributes attached to it, it'd be doing a little bit more damage than our Viking Sword. The Swing Seed would be probably similar, and the Reach. The Reach would be so damn nice. We have a good pair of Light Foots already, so really the only thing we can... The only thing we can roll on is this Castellan, which could give us... Gives us additional physical damage, which, uh... That will increase the damage we're doing on our main hand weapon as well. So that is nice. 75G. A little expensive. But really, Slayer is meant to be a cheap setup, so... There's not a huge amount of things you can start upgrading. If you're not running plate armors or crossbows, in this instance I'm using a shield, there's really not too many things you could be spending money on. Axes are always a great option if you have some leftover cash. And then, I guess we just buy a bunch of meds, and because the shop didn't change, I'm expecting meds to be pretty expensive. So you get a little bit scammed on these ones, but it's pretty much necessary. And I'm not going to wait around for the shop to change whenever that happens. So we'll take this. It's a little less than what I would have liked, and it costs a lot of money. We had like 100 gold, and now we're down to literally nothing. So, yeah. I do wish, I do wish you could buy meds, at least cheaper ones, just one more of each. One more of each would almost be perfect. But I understand also they're trying to limit how many meds people are running constantly and make it a little more difficult. But I feel like that doesn't matter to any of the top players as they have endless amounts of them if they're killing other people. But for players like myself, I'm constantly dealing with shop changes and hoping, uh, hoping I get enough meds or buying all that I can buy every time the shop comes up, filling my inventory with them, my limited stash space at least, so that I have something for the next run. We get some nice little Francisca axes, I think they're called. I just called them throwing axes. To start, which gives us two more. And that could be very valuable as we hope to hunt down some rangers. We're going right into the action here. I know there's a spawn close by. We'll just pop this door open and see what we can find. Out of the blue, I guess we aggroed Goblin Mage. Because he tried to stealthily hit us in the back with one of his curveballs. I've even sometimes seen them have their arm through a door casting them and I'd just randomly get hit by projectiles. There should be a spawn player here. This has me a little, a little concerned. But sure enough, here's that invisible player as we chop down another rogue. He only took a few slices out of us, so our health bar is still sitting pretty at, at 60%. And we can likely get that back with these expensive meds. So even though it was an easy kill, it still cost us dearly, as it could be, it could be pretty costly not having these potions near the end of any raid. I always find it funny you can hear Cave Troll below you as you're like two or three levels above where the location is. Not so much fun for the guys trying to do Cave Troll stealthily. We do a quick rest to make sure that potion gets us back to full, and then we're, we're on our way. See that the stuff over there is broken, so there may be a guy in this room as well, as this orc's getting tired of waiting to find these rangers. I often break these barrels not because I need to get by, but because, generally speaking, I do find a lot of good stuff in them. Nothing really of value this time, unfortunately. I'm expecting to see another player here soon, but this could have been the guy that just rushed Cave Troll. However, this door over here is open, so maybe he went this way. Up and around. I heard a, a light step over here, so considering our last engagement was a rogue in full stealth, I'm a little cautious. By a little, I mean very cautious that there could be a rogue just sitting around this corner. Looks like someone ditched a, a gray rogue cow as well, so the signs are there. Another rogue is somewhere on the loose. 
even though we came here to fight rangers, rogues are also very common. Not something the orc fighter would see very often, but still a menace to his way of life. Jumping into this room, this room has a ton of loot for being a bunch of pots. Probably the noisiest, most attention seeking thing you can do. But, oftentimes, you find enough loot to fill almost half your inventory with valuables. And can generally, just escaping with the stuff from this pot can be a pretty successful amount of loot for a new player. And it's quick, it doesn't take you too long, it's just very noisy. And we take a breather, listening, and we hear a player. I want to get eyes on this guy. We got another rogue. And that is a rogue wearing a little bit of gear, which has me... Has me slightly concerned. Got it. Ended up getting two kills in the top right with a rape mirror. And if any of you have been watching my past experiences, blue rape mirrors with a couple of blue pendants and rings are the probably number one killing item in goblin caves, especially in high roller goblin caves. That is absurd how many people are getting shanked by rogues. We hear an early portal, which is interesting to me, as I'm not feeling great. I'm not feeling great about this whole rogue situation in this match. We accidentally fall off here, which was not expected. We wanted to just throw some throwing axes. And we put ourselves in a very vulnerable position for this rogue to shank us. For whatever reason, he decides to mess off, and the wizard gets taken out by a goblin. But we're gonna take this opportunity and reset, maybe get a better shop, to buy a few items of actual value. Last time we found nothing to really even roll on, no rings, no pendants. And as I said, blue bonus damage dagger. Yeah. I think there's another one in this lobby as well, as we just saw. There's the ranger we've been trying to hunt. So we're gonna try this again, hope for better luck in the next one. Didn't feel like wasting all my resources hunting rogues, or getting hunted by rogues. But it's not something I have a lot of faith in using a viking sword. A rapier of the viking sword and that amount of movement speed leaves me pretty freaking vulnerable. We did get a protection potion, always useful. Didn't really make any money, which is kind of a shame. All that did was cost us a lot of money. And nothing really exciting. That mace could be very valuable. Very, very useful. Armor penetration is a lot better than what people realize when you're running dual wield plus lair. It would be an upgrade slightly from our Viking sword, but not enough to really make me jump on it. And then Couple merchants kind of trash. Really, like, cloth pants. <laughs> Nothing exciting at all. And we spent a lot of gold trying to get through that last level. We have 50, which is basically, basically enough to buy some meds. We'll make use of these silver coins as best we can. But really, it's a pretty bad shop. Nothing from the goblin merchant was interesting. I was kind of hoping to find an upgrade for this helmet. Offered a little bit more damage reduction. And the big thing you're going for is that headshot damage reduction. We see a guy with a bow, and this could be our ranger we're looking for. On closer inspection, this is actually a fighter. Fighter ranger of sorts. Something equally as frustrating. Maybe we'll be able to track him down and smash him with our shield like we just did there. Finally getting that shield smash in a position where it's where we can use it. I have been using it outside of this permadeath. It can be. It does have its moments. It's not... It's not super awful. But it's certainly not great either. The most fun I've had with it has been Buckler, and I'll show you guys some examples of this at the end. And I'll show you why Buckler is just a little bit better. That movement speed and the animation on the Shield Smash is a little different for every shield. You can Shield Smash with Pavis, but it, it actually hits walls and stuff because it's such a weird, wide swing and 
The amount of times I've been hit through a pavise when I'm holding block makes no sense to me. We know there's a spawn close by here. I'm really hoping. I'm really hoping it's a ranger and we see our first arrow fly. And this is exactly what this orc came here for. He is about to hunt this guy down, and we want to smash this guy with our shield so freaking bad. We get close to him, and he just, he starts dropping clothes, and just it reaches us, as that shield mask would have kept him slowed down for another follow-up hit. And this guy is quick. Incredibly quick. This ranger can outrun us, and really at this point we should have dropped our clothes as well. He is dancing around, drawing every mob in the room, and we are failing some of these jumps to get over the barrels. That means we get a little slash to our toes as we take some damage jumping over. As we gauge where this ranger went to. We're gonna grab these potions. That invisibility potion could be handy if we're trying to drop mob aggro. Somehow he rotated around behind us as we take an arrow in the back. He is outrunning all the mobs and somehow still able to draw his bow and get arrows off. We're going to use our protection potion to negate some of that arrow damage we do receive as we juke around some of these mobs. We take another slice somehow, just getting close enough to one. And we need to start maybe dealing with these before we can get close enough. We hear him drawing his bow, which means we need to get our shield back up immediately. As he misses his quick, quick shot, we are once again healing back up as fast as possible. This has turned into a, a little bit of chaos that I was not expecting. We need these mobs to get off us for a second. This guy must have saw us because I thought for sure he was going to slam us with an arrow there. And once again, so frustrating. Shield smash just doesn't quite reach him. He's just fast enough with all his clothes off that even with sprint popped. I cannot, cannot get close enough to him. We tag him with a throwing axe, try to slow him down in hopes that a goblin can reach him, as a whole bunch of the aggro switches onto us. And this has become frustrating, but also hilarious. He tags us in the foot, we get our sprint, and the mobs block us once again so we can't get close enough to him as he somehow maneuvers around them. And this guy is not just a ranger, but also a ninja. We're hearing him drawing his bow, looking for us again. And somehow, Mage misses him as well. Twice. We're starting to close the gap on this guy, so perhaps this is our moment as Sprint and Shield Smash is off cooldown. And maybe we'll finally get to land one and slow this guy down. We hit him, but as you see, that slow only lasts two seconds. Only lasts two seconds. So, by the time I drew my weapons, and the fact that I'm using a Viking Sword means I can't get close enough to him once again. If I was using any other combination, that 5 movement speed would probably, probably have been enough to catch him. And then also the reach on an arming sword or falchion would have clipped him in the hips. The spiking sword is very much letting us down at this moment. And as you can see, shield smash isn't great when it comes to range. And especially the round shield doesn't have a great animation as it's more of a push than it is a smash. Using a shield by itself, though, provides you a decent opportunity to get close, as you are quite fast with this setup. This is not where I want to go. And sure enough, we fall into the trap, which is... There's always a rogue waiting around the next dark corner. Just as it's getting excited and interested in chasing that ranger down one more time, this rogue decides to take his opportunity of great skill and excitement and end my run. So, that's it. Unfortunately, that ranger didn't make it much further as he finally... He actually died before we did. So, back on to Shield Smash, and this is why I use Buckler or prefer Buckler when chasing down any opponent. If you are going to try it out, it's hilariously fun and you may have seen my shorts video where I use it to smash a guy trying to parry me. So it can be fun, it can be hilarious, I just think the buckler is the way to go for that reason alone. You can often smash them with it as they're not expecting it, and then follow it up with a, a jump away into your dual wield setup. It's funny, it's hilarious, I've killed countless people using it. The only issue you run into 
It's the fact that you have to get close to them, and they can't hit you through that block. So, you need to be really good at blocking and then using your distance, and we actually catch that guy's hands, so it slows him down. And he gets himself all messed up with his quarterstaff, as I think it was probably his first time using it. You can use it on slower targets to get space, but like I said, you have to be really good at blocking, you have to time it super well, and oftentimes they'll just swing through it as Shield Smash doesn't block while it's in the animation, which is a bit of a shame, and probably the one thing I wish they would change. Other than that, I wish you all the best of luck, and thank you for spectating this once again. And I hope to figure out my recording issues going forward. Cheers, I'll see you in the next one.